At Intel's innovation event, their CEO Pat Gelsinger has just announced the age of the AI PC and the launch of Intel Core Ultra, which means that we are now obliged to forget all about the name Meteor Lake and move forward. Intel Core Ultra is where it's at. The journey begins with our upcoming new Intel Core Ultra processor launch, formerly Meteor Lake. I'll probably goof it up one or twice in the keynote yet. Also, we note the launch date, December the 14th, 2023. Whether that means laptops will be in the shops in the middle of December or just in time for Christmas or at CES 2024, who knows? But they're coming soon. Intel was talking quite recently about their rebranding of Core i5, Core i7, Core i9 to other names such as Intel Core Ultra, but the details are currently a little bit hazy. We can see from this leak on video cards, Core Ultra 7155H, Core Ultra 7165H, and Core Ultra 9185H. We can also see the leaked configurations of these three processors. We have six P cores, eight E cores, and two extra E cores on the SOC, the system on chip. We'll dive into the details of this hierarchy of cores shortly. Pat Gelsinger was keen to point out that Intel Core Ultra is the first processor on the Intel 4 process, which uses EUV technology. It has 3D performance hybrid architecture, that hierarchy of processor cores. It has an NPU AI engine and a number of other clever features. But the theme, again and again throughout innovation, AI PC fundamentally transforming the PC experience with AI, artificial intelligence. And Pat teased us that Intel needed a co-pilot on this AI project. So enter stage right, Microsoft. Also enter stage right, Acer. It would be an absolute shock if Intel didn't partner with Acer for their new laptops. However, apart from the Acer Swift, there was no mention of any other partners. And coming soon after what was Meteor Lake, we have Arrow Lake, then Lunar Lake and Panther Lake. But these are names that we already know. Interestingly, Intel is determined that performance per unit of energy, i.e. efficiency, must become our industry's mission. AMD has been saying that for ages. Happily, we are able to bring you more details, details that we were told about while we were on tour with Intel in Malaysia, at that point under embargo, but now the lid has been lifted. We're going to dive into the inner workings of Intel Meteor Lake, but before we can do that, we need to briefly revisit some slides. And I apologize if you've been keeping up to date with various Leo says, uh, such as my Intel five nodes in four years video, because if so, some of these slides will be familiar, but I shall be brief. Intel Alder Lake and Intel Raptor Lake on the desktop introduced us to the concept of a hybrid architecture combining P cores and E cores. Meteor Lake and then Arrow Lake bring us onto something new, which is a disaggregated design. Put it another way, chiplets. More importantly, a number of chiplets. We're not just talking one IO die and one or two CPU chiplets. There's a lot more going on than that. Also the process Intel 4, which uses EUV. And if you look at that purple box, you will see external N3. That is a clear reference to TSMC. In other words, Intel with a disaggregated design can put together chips made by both themselves and other foundries, in this case, TSMC. When we move on to Intel Lunar Lake and beyond, where they're putting more of an emphasis on ultra low power performance, we're sticking with an external foundry, again, presumably TSMC, and they're moving to an Intel 18 a process. This diagram of Meteor Lake with Foveros, you can see quite clearly three tiles. We have the compute die, the SOC and the GPU. This is not entirely honest or accurate. Intel has been pulling the wool over our eyes. If we look here at this tray of 20 Meteor Lake CPUs, in particular on the left hand side, second from the bottom, you can see that actually Meteor Lake has four tiles that are visible to the eye. If we look at this lovely image supplied by Intel and then a somewhat more ropey photo taken by me, we can quite clearly see there are four distinct tiles, not three. We know about the compute tile, the SOC and the graphics tile. So what is that fourth smaller tile? And here we see in this diagram from Intel, 
the fourth tile is the I.O. So the SOC is the single largest part. By I, the compute and the graphics are fairly equal. And then we have an I.O. die. Those four tiles are arranged on an EMU base tile and then connected together using Foveros 3D packaging. The compute tile is fabricated on Intel 4 process technology and has both new E cores and P cores. If we look closely at this diagram, we can see clearly it has six P cores and eight E cores. Intel's emphasis here quite clearly is on power and efficiency rather than outright grunt. The SOC tile is far more interesting than the name suggests. For one thing it has a new low power island which means it contains two E cores. So there are two processor cores in the SOC. This means that rather than Intel just having to shut down parts of the compute tile when they're not required, it can in certain circumstances close off the entire compute tile to save power. Also, the SOC contains an NPU AI engine. That would be a neural processing unit that powers the AI or artificial intelligence side of things. The SOC includes the latest connectivity, so either Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7. The SOC also contains the memory controller. So in a sense, the memory controller has returned from the processor to the chipset. The graphics tile naturally uses a form of Intel Arc. The I.O. tile, this does a surprising amount of work and includes Thunderbolt 4 and PCI Express Gen 5. It is interesting to note that Intel has just recently started talking about Thunderbolt 5, which is coming in 2024. The layout of the tiles with the SOC in the middle of things is something we have not seen before in PC chips. And here we see the logic. This slide shows next gen uncore guiding principles or to put it another way, the SOC here is doing most of the work, the graphics, compute and I.O. almost nothing. And we take all those features together and voila, you have Meteor Lake or Intel Core Ultra if you prefer. The two low power E cores in the SOC are significant. It means there is a hierarchy of three types of cores, the low power E cores, the regular E cores and the P cores. You'll note it doesn't much matter which technology is in any of these cores, it's the hierarchy that counts and this is all pulled together with Intel ThreadDirector. Kit Guru recently interviewed an Intel engineer about this very topic and we'll put the link on the screen so you can go off and watch that interview separately. The way the processor has been organized is interesting. Here we have a prior generation processor. The fact it has P cores and E cores by definition means it must be quite a recent processor. But the point is you have a CPU and you have a chipset. In order to move to Meteor Lake, which is a wholly different concept, they had to think big. Essentially by chopping up the processor into parts, chips, tiles. Where Intel was to make the cut lines is what defined Meteor Lake. The result is four tiles, as already discussed. Clearly the scale here is slightly distorted, but the SOC in the middle and hanging off that, the IO, compute and graphics tiles. And you can see here the functions of the SOC, which are huge. In essence, the SOC is the laptop, and then the compute, IO and graphics are extras, clearly very important extras, but it's the SOC at the heart of things. Within the SOC, we have the MPU handling AI workloads, media, i.e. media playback, imaging and display, putting the image on your screen. This is the essence of the processor. This slide for the IO breakout challenge shows the three tile layout that we were originally led to believe was Meteor Lake. Perhaps this was the original design, but it's clearly not the final design. So graphics, SOC and compute. They decided to add an IO tile. Why did they do that? Partly it's to allow tile variant for market needs. In other words, different tiles can be suited to different markets. Partly, it's to add extra edges. Edges are where you make connections. And the result is the four tile layout that makes up Meteor Lake. We're already familiar with Intel's hybrid architecture and we are now familiar with Intel's 3D performance hybrid architecture. The fact that Meteor Lake includes new P cores based on Redwood Cove technology and new E cores based on Cressmont technology has been well known for many months. What we don't of course know is how these new cores will perform. So we're gonna to have to wait and see on that front. When we look at how ThreadDirector schedules these cores, power efficient AI is wholly new. And you can see in this slide that AI can run on GPU, NPU or CPU. 
how AI workloads is scheduled is a matter of great interest to Intel. And as Intel says, AI is everywhere. At present, AI workloads are handled in the cloud. Here Intel lists some issues with this, such as for example, cloud is expensive because someone has to provide those services. Much better if you can move AI workloads towards the edge or indeed down to the client device, i.e. Meteor Lake. And here we can see that the AI workload is a balance between GPU, NPU and CPU. Each of these tiles could handle the AI workload, it's a question of which tile is best suited, both for balancing power and speed. And this is where the presentation started to get somewhat frustrating for we tech journalists. This is a description, in all seriousness, of how AI will generate an image of a cat wearing a pink ribbon bow. But the thing is, even if you think I hate the idea of AI technology, an awful lot of companies are on board with it. And there is a huge amount of software in the stack behind the scenes. Deciding which software will be used for which workload is down to the software vendors. But Intel is determined that Meteor Lake can handle absolutely everything. So when Intel tells us that the Meteor Lake NPU delivers power efficient AI functions, you have to believe they mean it. But of course, until we see it in action, we won't know quite what this means. Microsoft Copilot would appear to be the starting point, but it looks like an awful lot of companies are going to get on the bandwagon and right quick. We're going to finish up this whistle stop tour of Intel Meteor Lake with a quick look at the graphics side of things, just so we can see how Intel has changed pretty much everything they're doing in this processor. Clearly the graphics tile is all about graphics, but within the SSC there are two pieces of graphics hardware. One is the XE Media Engine. This is fixed function hardware that handles video codecs. And we also have the XE Display Engine. Then within the I.O. tile, we have more hardware specifically to handle displays. Here we see the XE Media Engine and here we can see the video codecs that are baked into the hardware. The idea is that specific hardware can do a much more efficient job than general purpose hardware. And then we have the spec of the XE Display Engine, up to four 4K displays or 8K60. And both HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 2.1 are supported. The XE graphics tile is of course meant for rather grander things. Intel saying their new hardware can run at higher clock speeds on lower voltage, or a bit of both, so you've got more performance and better efficiency. And within the GPU, they have really cranked up the hardware. We have to acknowledge Intel's integrated graphics have never had the greatest reputation, but they have improved over recent years, particularly since Tiger Lake. You have to wonder whether Meteor Lake is going to see the end of NVIDIA MX graphics in Intel laptops. And here we see just how hard Intel is working with upscaling technology to give you decent 1080p gameplay. This slide showing regular gameplay at 28 watts versus endurance gaming at a mere 10 watts is quite interesting. But of course, until we get a laptop in for a review, it doesn't mean a lot. But it is clear that Intel is taking graphics in Meteor Lake very seriously. I've shown you a tiny fraction of the slides that we were shown about Intel's design choices as they came up with Meteor Lake. I have to confess I'm quite excited about it. It's clearly something different, it's a very involved product that has huge promise. But so far all we've seen have been renderings and words, plus one or two canned demos. What we haven't seen, and you will have noticed this no doubt, is we have no detail about the SKUs how many cores, what clock speeds, how big are the graphics cores, what kind of features are actually baked into any particular laptop. Again, I have a certain amount of optimism and indeed excitement that Meteor Lake laptops should offer good performance and excellent battery life. But features such as a new AI engine, I literally don't know what that means at present. It's clearly going to be the way of the future. It doesn't much matter whether we don't like the idea of AI in fact, we're afraid of AI or welcome it. It's just going to happen, so we might as well get on board. In the meantime, I'm waiting to see my first example of a Meteor Lake laptop, hopefully before Christmas, and I'm quite certain there'll be many examples on the show at CES in January 2024.